Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story from Nutrition Journal. I'm sure you got a copy of it on your coffee table. I know I've got it somewhere. College women. College women. Ages 18 to 24. Are so enamored of losing weight, no matter how thin they already are, that fully 83% of them diet, often turning to unhealthy techniques such as skipping breakfast or smoking to reach their ideal size. This from a new study at East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina. Led by Brenda M. Malinowskis, a professor in the Department of Nutrition and Hospitality Management. The team polled 185 female college students about their dieting practices and physical activity. Each participant's weight, height, and BMI were recorded. And they were classified as normal weight, overweight, or obese. While 80% of the women said they exercised to lose or control their weight, only 19% did enough physical activity for it to have an impact on weight loss. The most common way is to diet, were to eat or drink low-fat or fat-free foods and drinks, which 59% did. And to consciously eat less than they desire to practice, followed by 51% of the women. Here are the other methods of weight loss. Counting calories, 40%. Using artificial sweeteners, 31%. Skipping breakfast, 32%. Smoking to lose weight, 9%. Vomiting to lose weight, 5%. Using laxatives, 3%. Why are so many young women addicted to dieting? Nearly 60% said they felt pressure from themselves, friends, and the media to be a certain weight. The surprise finding is that dieting was just as common among those of normal weight as it was among those who were overweight. Malinowskis tells Health Day News the research shows that college women need to be counseled individually to help them learn which practices to lose and maintain weight are healthy and which are not. Such counseling is available at the Student Health Center on most college campuses. Look at that. 83% of women age 18 to 24 addicted to dieting, and why not? They know that if they are fat, they will not meet wealthy, successful guys. And if they meet those guys, those guys will not want to have sex with them, get serious with them, or marry them. Women have to diet because rich men can afford thin girls. If a woman wants to marry a successful guy, she has to be thin. That is how it is. Have you seen a rich, successful guy with a fat woman? Of course you have. But usually that woman was thin when he married her. Many times, the fat wife is supplanted by a thinner, younger, hotter trophy wife. Do I feel badly that young women are pressured to diet? They feel pressure to diet? Absolutely not. The pressure is only normal. Young women know that if they are fat, men of power, men of success, men of money will not have them. Why would I feel sorry for these women? Why would I want to re-educate these women? As a man with money, power, and fame, I want young, thin women. I don't want the chunksters. I don't want the girls wearing the tank tops with the beer guts sticking out. I don't want them. You know what? Most guys with money, power, or fame don't want women like that. Of course they're dieting. They're trying to make themselves desirable to guys who have what they want. Money. Money. 
The fatter you are, the more likely it is you're going to end up with a guy who doesn't have any. That's the way it is. I am not worried about, well, the images, women's body images and uh, the, the pressure from Playboy magazine and ads and fashion magazines. What do I care? The ideals these women are trying to meet up with are the ideals that rich, powerful, successful men want women to meet up with. The fat guys are there, uh, fat, uh, the fat chicks are there for the poor guys. It's kind of Darwinian, don't you think? I mean, sure, there's a person for everybody. But fat chicks get poor guys. That's why I tell you boys to make as much money as you can. Keep going to school. Don't get married. Don't get involved until you become a success at whatever you've dreamed of becoming a success at. Because then you get the hottest, youngest chicks. I don't feel badly that... Uh, Young women and even uh, girls, maturing girls, teenage girls, they're all obsessed with losing weight, all obsessed about the way they look. That's great. I think it's spectacular. Keep it up, girls. Your only hope of getting a desirable guy is to be thin and hot. I know that's politically incorrect. I know your parents won't tell you that. I know they tell you that there's somebody out there who will love you just the way they are, they, you are, but, and there is somebody out there. He's poor, he's undereducated, he has a lousy job. Yes, there will be somebody who will love you, but he won't be rich or successful, girls. You've got to be hot and thin. Anything wrong with that? Tom like this. 1-800-5800-866. Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's a good slogan for our show. Better than a fatal accident. The Tom like his show. Tom like it show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Let's say hello here to Damien on the Tom like it show. Hey Tom, how are you? Doing okay, Damien. Hey, it's a pleasure. A uh, long time, first time. I've been listening to you since the, your AM days in Los Angeles. Cool. Hey, uh, yeah, just wanted to say I very much agree with uh, what you're commenting on earlier about the overweight women. Um, I live in Orange County, and I spend a lot of time in Newport Coast, one of the richest per capita cities. And uh, that's what you see. You see the trophy wives, thin, not overweight at all. And uh, the scenario you just described is is, uh, is exactly right. Uh, there's a very interesting phenomenon in Southern California. Uh, as you go further inland, women get fatter. Oh, really? I think you can add a pound for every mile of, uh, east a woman lives. <laughs> There's a mathematical formula for it. So those chicks out in, uh, you know, Hemet, Moreno Valley, uh, they're about 50, 60 pounds overweight. Uh, that's an interesting, interesting uh, idea there because, that, yeah, that's true. I used to live in the Inland Empire as well, and they are quite a bit more overweight over there. The closer women live to the water, the hotter they are. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, anyways, for those doubters, the women who are going to call in or whoever's going to call in, especially the fat ones, and complain, so all I have to do is take a trip down Newport Coast. There's a shopping center down there with the Trader Joe's and a bunch of other nice places, and they'll see the trophy wives all over. It's thin and hot. That's right. And they have to stay thin and hot because their husbands might meet somebody younger, thinner, and hotter. Hey, that's absolutely true. They got their Bentleys, their Rolls, and other nice cars and their $10 million homes. And, yeah, they, the wives better stay that way or else they'll get dumped instantly. That's right. And that's the way it should be. Yeah, I agree 100%. So I wanted to say, Tom, I appreciate your time. Damien, thank you very much for the call. It's Jimmy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Tom. Yes. How are you, sir? Do you care? Absolutely. First time, well, actually, first time in a long time. Cool. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, I want to make a comment on, uh, on these chicks uh, because uh, I drive for a living, and uh, I see them everywhere, hot chicks. But a lot of them, I see, lady, they're so skinny. I mean, they look like they got some kind of disease or something. Uh, where are you seeing women that thin? I mean, actually, I'm all over uh, L.A., Beverly Hills, West L.A., you name it. They're so Jimmy, are you wealthy? Beg your pardon? Are you wealthy? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty well off, yeah. 
I got how, my own how well off are you? Well, let's see. I can take a month off vacation, one, um, one month out of year. That's not, that's not wealthy. Well, yeah. I mean, you know. How much do you make, point. Jimmy? How much I make? I make about between 45 and 50 a year. That's not wealthy. Well, I don't have kids. I don't have, you know. No, no. I don't, care. I don't care if you're living by yourself. That's not wealthy. Well, uh, so far, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Guys with money don't want chicks with meat on their bones. Yeah, you see what it is, Tom? I mean, I don't like bone. You might have a different opinion if you can afford better. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, we, we are the guys. We love hot chicks. But what I'm saying is, too skinny is no good. Yeah, but I mean, we're not I'm talking not about be, uh, women who are, you know, 78 pounds here, okay? Well, no, that's right. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of women out there who are 150, 160 pounds. No, Too I'm, much. I'm, I'm good. Too I'm, much. I'm, I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm talking about between, I'm between 120 and 135, I'm good. Yeah, they, they can come with me anytime. Yeah, it depends on their height, Jimmy. Uh, if I don't she's 5'4 like and 135, she's fat. You think so? Yes. Well, but you got to feel a little bit of meat, though, Tom. But believe me, the meat is where it belongs. Right. <laughs> on her butt, on her boobs, that's where I want the meat. I don't want yeah. meat anywhere else. Right, right. Yeah, I hear you. But anyways, well, I'm I'm glad, you know, that we have a man like you in, in, in here at town because I wish we had a few more men like you. It would be a perfect world. Well, I'm glad I don't have the competition, Jimmy. That's all I can say about that. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, what's up, my man? Not much, John. Hey, listen, I wanted to comment on what's going on here. Well, I got three sisters. They're all older than me, but when they were growing up, my parents knew back then, they marketed them pretty much just like that. The uh, smart one, they marketed her, hey, you know, you're smart, this is the way you're going to go. Uh, my one sister was chubby at a younger age, and she uh, pretty much ended up with the guy who's the dumb guy. My one brother-in-law, he's he's pretty much uh, dumb. And my one sister, she ended up with the, the one that's the hottest. They were all my friends used to say in high school, dude, your sister's hot. She ended up with the rich guy, the big house, cars, all that kind of stuff. So That's how it works. Works out. And her, uh, my rich, uh, well, her husband's rich. They got two twin girls, and they're doing it the same way. And those kids got other little kids in the neighborhood cutting the grass for them and all kinds of stuff. You can see it going on easily. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's caused some problems in my family. It did it used to. You know, my one sister, she was uh, probably about 80 pounds overweight, and she got pretty jealous of it, but... That's just life. That is life, John. That's the way it is. Uh, fat chicks end up with poor guys. It's just that simple. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Nathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great, Nathan. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, these, these guys are saying that they like the fat chicks because they, kind of, they, they, just, they, they obviously can't get better. Uh, I started off my life not you know in construction, not making any money, and I had the fat chick. But now I'm uh, got myself a college education, uh, got myself a good uh, good job, and started getting a really successful career going. And I'm getting better and better chicks every day. That's the way it works. <laughs> you know, 27 years old now, and you know, making about 50 a year, and I'm doing double as good as I did. When I mean, I, I wonder how many guys married. would get married if they knew that the older they get, the more money they make, the more successful they are, the hotter, younger chicks they get. It, it's exactly right. It's exactly right. You know, I'm seven, like I said, I'm 27 now, and I'm dating those 21, 22-year-old girls, and uh -huh. I have my pick at this point, uh, uh, you know, as it is right now, because these people have just no idea. Uh, actually, I think they have a perfect idea, and they, they're doing exactly what they want. And that's to pick me. And, and like I was in high school, I was the nerd. I was, I, you know, I didn't, I played games, read books all the time. I wasn't able to do anything with girls. But now that I'm older and more successful, they're just coming off the trees for me. Well, I, I always remember, I always remind myself that my trophy girl of the future, right now, she's at the mall shopping at Hot Topic. <laughs> she's got a Hello Kitty pencil case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, you know. And one I, day when she's legal, I'm pulling kids. her panties off. Exactly. I mean, I, I, there's no way. I've never, I haven't even thought about marriage at this point. Why would I? Like you were saying before, there's no reason for, you know, uh, for men to get married. I don't see it at all. I mean, what are they going to do? Especially, like, say, for example, when I'm 40 and I'm making, you know, over $100,000 a year and very successful in my career, 
then I can even get better than I do now. That's right. <laughs> So, I mean, and I know you're going to get calls from all these women coming up here pretty soon. They're going to start complaining and moaning and feminism this and feminism that. But it's the women's fault anyways. I mean, they're, they're the ones that are sitting there among each other saying, you know, and you can see it. I mean, you can see that the hotter chicks go with the better guys and uh, the more successful guys, rather. And the, the ones that aren't are the ones that are, you know, with the guys that, aren't, that haven't done anything with their lives, that are still working for dominoes or, you know, and I did that when I was 18. I'm done with that crap now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the girls who are d dating guys who work for UPS. What's wrong with UPS? But you know what I'm talking about. Exactly. The girls who are dating the guy who delivers for Albertsons. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. girls who are dating the guys who aren't working right now. Yeah, that's the one that gets me. Oh God, how can only somebody not work and expect to have a hot chick? How? Oh, it's impossible. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Tom. Thank you for your show and uh, take me out. All right. Here you go, Nathan. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Buddy? Doing okay, son. Hey, I just got to say, you are the best thing that has happened to Arizona ever. Thank you. Yeah, not only that, but I, I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, I'm really tired of these daytime talk shows that are telling women out there on the couch that it's okay to be 50, 80 pounds overweight. You know what, Tom? They really need to just put down the potato chips, stop going to Blockbuster. They need to go work out. They need to go join a gym, you know? I agree with you. It's the truth. It's the truth. You know, you're right. Nobody wants to date a fat chick. I just, I can't even stand to look at fat people. And and if you have money, you don't have to look at them. Exactly. Love right, that, Ryan. You. Thank you for that, Rudy, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, man? First time. Thank you, Rudy. Hey, um, I've been living by your code since I was in the eighth grade, and I just started listening to you about a year ago. I haven't had a girlfriend since 98. I'm 22. I get a lot of ass, Tom. Love that. Yeah, it's great, man. Now that you show me how to do things better, it's even better and easier. Now, you told Dean a story about when you went to San Francisco. What happened? Yeah, yeah, I went to San Francisco. I went out there to see a Metallica concert when they opened up for the Stones back in November. Yeah. I rented, I rented a Beamer. I took a nice shirt, an expensive shirt, a tie, and then me and my cousin went out to a club. And then this girl, she bought me a drink, and I told her I was out here for business, gave her a business card, and then just took her home. Back to the motel. <laughs> Do you know what a guy told me? Of course, I wouldn't recommend this because I'm not sure about the legality of it. I'm just going to tell you what somebody told me. What's There's that? a guy who told me when he's on the road, when nobody's looking. You know how at uh, restaurants and stuff, they've got those big fish bowls full of people's business cards and you can win free dinner? Yeah. Or, or win a briefcase or something like that? He reaches into the fishbowl and pulls a couple of business cards out. Those are the ones he gives out to chicks when he nails them. Uh, They've funny. got executive titles on them. And if these chicks get pregnant and try to get in touch with them, guess what? They're calling some other guy. <laughs> That's genius. I'm going to try that, too. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, and here's the thing. The guy could never get nailed for child support. One DNA test will prove he's not the father either. By that time, too late for her. Yeah. Yeah, girls are just dumb. It's fun. Now, of course, I personally would not recommend that. But uh, just thought you should know that somebody did it. Yeah, well, I I just try to see what it would do. It works all the time when I do it over here in L.A. Well, I'm proud of you, Rudy. What can I say? Let's say hi to Amber on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm kind of in that situation. Like, I'm pretty, like, not to be conceited or anything, but I'm pretty hot, and all people look at my boyfriend and be like, oh, my God, you're only with him for his money. But it's not true in every case because I don't, yeah, he makes a lot of money, but I love him. You know what I mean? But I do see that in all my girlfriends. My girlfriends all look the same. They're all like Barbie dolls, and they just only go for guys with a lot of money. Uh-huh. And so I think what you're saying is true. <laughs> and even you don't have a boyfriend who's poor. No, I don't, but I'm not saying I wouldn't. 
I mean, you know that guy? You ever see the guy who dresses up like a big Coke and stands outside of Quiznos? <laughs> yes, I do. And You wouldn't oh date that guy, would you? No, I would not. Well, that's my point. I know. And that guy... You may be in love with your boyfriend, but you fell in love with your boyfriend after you knew what his bank account said. No, no, that's not true. Come on. <laughs> no, and that guy before, like two calls before... So, so like, your oh boyfriend God. told you how much money he had after he became your boyfriend, and you were shocked. I wasn't shocked because, you know, it was kind of knowledge that he was the only one out of his friends that had a good job. <laughs> well, that's my point here. Oh, okay. <laughs> If you didn't know what he did for a living, you may not have uh, dated him. Well, no, that's not true, because my ex-boyfriend didn't have a job, and I dated him, and I paid yeah, all Yeah, how'd that money. work out? You broke up with him. <laughs> yeah, but not. it was only because I met my current boyfriend, and we fell in love. Only because you oh, and screwed around on him as well. No, I didn't. I swear to God, I never screwed around on him. We never how did you him. fall in love with the other guy before you broke up with the first guy? Because we became friends first, and then, like, we just started becoming more than friends. Like right, and this is why I tell guys that if your girlfriend has male friends, get out. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny, because he never trusted him, and he kind of knew that we were falling in love before I even knew, so... Oh, yeah, and you were saying, he's just a friend! Can't a girl have friends? <laughs> yeah. He's my friend! Why do you get upset because I want to hang out with my friend? <laughs> You're absolutely right. I know. <laughs> That's trouble. I know, it is. Mm. But do you remember that guy two calls ago that was saying, and I'm for once I'm 40 and I'm making over $100,000 a year. That guy is a loser. Oh, my God. He's all bragging about how much money he makes and how he can get 21 and 2-year-old girls, but none of my friends would date a guy that doesn't make $100,000 a year. You know what I mean? I understand mean? that. So if he makes yeah. 140000 they might date him. Maybe. That's my point. Yeah. I know what you're saying. But and if your boyfriend was the guy dressed up as the Coca-Cola over at Quiznos, <laughs> you would not be dating him. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So and you're just like your girlfriends. You're all with rich guys. No, not, well, not, I'm not as bad as them. I just got lucky enough oh. to land one. You just got lucky enough. <laughs> Yeah, my guy But you already knew how much money he made. You just told me that. I know, but I didn't fall in love with him for that. I fell in love oh, with him. Oh, well, him. how would you know? The only way you could know that for sure is if he quit his job and went to work for Quiznos. Oh, well, that is true. But he laid off when we lived down in San Diego, and I still loved him. And then he got his job up in Huntington. And so then you loved him off. even more. Huh? Then you loved him even more. <laughs> No, I actually worked doubles when he was um, laid off down in San Diego, so I didn't uh -huh. care. Uh-huh. So, just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for informing me there, dear. You're such an OG pimp. I love your style, you know. What you teach is like how I live, you know. That's my life now, thank God. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from New York City at 1 800 5800 Tom. So what if young girls are dieting? Lots of them are dieting. How many? Try 83% of all college women, ages uh, 18 to 24. 83%. Good. 1-800-5800-TOM. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Mike. How's it going, Tom? Going great, Mike. Listen, I want to tell you, you're right on the money with hot women and rich guys. But I want to ask a question to all these women who I know are going to be calling in. How come it's wrong for a guy to dump a woman when she loses her looks, but it's okay for a woman to dump a guy when he loses his earning potential? Very good question, Mike. You, got, you, know, you own a business for yourself. Things go south. You have a bad year. All of a sudden, you're not earning, and all of a sudden, she's looking. But that's okay. Everybody accepts that. But if a woman changes who she was and she's not this young, hot thing anymore, and if the guy dumps her, well, he's a heel. 
You are exactly right. So how I don't understand what you say is so obvious and so basic and so true that guys like hot women, hot women like rich guys. Why can't we just admit that and move on? Well, because it's politically incorrect, Mike, as you know. That is now, I don't worry about being politically incorrect on this program, but... No, you don't. You know, you're supposed to tell that, that, that fat little girl of yours that she can grow up to be with Prince Charming. Right. Or anybody. You know, God forbid if a guy who's, who's successful runs into a, a bad streak, loses, you know, his earning potential, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, he's a loser. And it's That's okay right. for her to dump the loser. No doubt about it. You're absolutely right, Mike. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Annie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I, I called in to be honest today. Normally, I listen to you, and I'm cussing at the radio because I think you're, you know, sometimes a pig. But I got married when I was 19, very young, and now I'm 30. I work with men all day long. And I had no idea the potential, the power that I would have to get a guy with a lot of money when I was 19. And now I see it. I make a hundred and a half a year. My husband makes around 50. Everything's in my name. I mean, I'm doing it. But I had no idea I could have had sugar daddies left and right. So That's right. And, and if I was single, I probably would now. And that's why he jumped in and married you as fast as he could so and nobody no else could get their hands me. on you. He's 10 years older than me. And so, you know, he'll tell you in a minute, hell, I knew what potential you had. So, you're he right. He shut you right down. Huh? He shut you right down. Yep, he did. He shut it down, and now he's he's the beneficiary. That's for damn sure. So, you're right, and I probably should have waited. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Yes, and hey, can you please take me out Kobe style? Of course I can. Here you go. You go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's your beat to my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh. 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 Ariana on the Tom Liges Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm Hi. So I hope I don't, hope I get the point across. Um, I just wanted to say that I think it's politically incorrect to promote the fact that some people think that it's okay for you to be heavy because it's actually not okay for you to be heavy. Oh, you know, they tell women on TV all the time, be large and in charge. You got that <laughs> uh, that fatty Monique on there having fatty awards on TV and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I'm, I don't think it's such a hot idea to say that it's so good because it really isn't. However, there was the guy who called who said that he liked meaty girls. That I think is more of a, I'd say that would be more of a cultural thing. I don't, I don't know that he meant a big fat girl, but I do think that a girl with a big fat butt is definitely sexy. When I see women on TV, I'm looking more at Selma Hayek than like Giselle. I think oh, I'd rather I'd, I like love Giselle. Selma Hayek. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but no. Selma oh, Hayek no. has a I lot up top good. also. Selma Hayek is proportionate. Yes, exactly. And she's also very toned. So if you're nice in tone and you're proportioned... The problem is there are people who would like to lump Monique in with Selma Hayek. Yeah, no, I think that's a little ridiculous. Also, Come on, I they're both curvy. Monique, I don't know. They're that. curvy. Well, Selma and Monique are curvy. And I do think that to each... They're bootylicious. Uh, yeah, and again, there is going to be those skinny white guys out there that are actually looking for that, so... I guess, again, you know, it depends on what's going on like, with the person. Also, I do want to say, though, that I think the guys who get the richest, most beautiful, most are actually musicians. They're usually rich, but I have some friends that have done some things for a guy who sings or is an artist. Those guys get a hell of a lot of, a lot of ass. They got so. a lot of ass. They don't necessarily marry any of it. No, but that's the deal. That's why they're so. See, wonderful. the woman will will nail that that uh, musician, uh, but then will eventually marry Poindexter. Yeah, hopefully not. I guess it depends, though. Usually, they get the models, even the old ugly ones, which doesn't make any sense. But I don't know. But yeah, Tom, thank you so much for letting me be on your show. I really like the show, and 
I've been listening to it for the past couple of months, and every time you talk about something, I always want to call in. So, well, you finally made it in, Ariana. Thank you for that. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Father. Hello, son. I'm out here in Tempe, Arizona, and I just graduated from ASU. And I'm from Santa Barbara, so I see your whole theory about the women from the coast. And I, I agree with you completely. What's your theory out here for where all the hot women are? Again, uh, the hot women are there because there's money in Scottsdale. Yeah. Hot yeah, women are in Huntington that. Beach because there's money. Newport Beach because there's money. Yeah. Dallas because there's money. Yeah. Hot women are not in Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> Um, so, now you don't feel like, you know, the further inland you go, the fatter the girls get? Yes. Do you, have any, do you have any theories that apply out here? Um, I would say when you're talking in Arizona, uh, it's miles north of Phoenix. Yeah? The city of. And you know, the city has moved northward as the years have gone on. Yeah. But, uh, the women in Cottonwood are not as hot as the women in Phoenix. Absolutely not. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I came out here for one reason. It wasn't to go to school. It's all the tens on the ASU campus. That's right. <laughs> that all right a lot of them, Ryan. Uh, all right. Take me out Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. <laughs> Tom like it. One eight hundred five five eight hundred. Tom. You do a wonderful job at roping us gals in, suckering us into your song, and bending us over slowly. It's amazing. And you all hate each other. It's so easy. It's the Tom Like It Show. Five eight hundred Tom. Denise. I'm sorry. What's your name? Mr. Who did you call to talk to? Who did you call to talk to? Mr. Likas. Tom is that? I'll get him for you. Hold on. What's up, Likas Show? 1 800 5800 Tom, this is Denise. Hello. Hello, is this Mr. Likas? Did you want to speak to him? I think this is, it sounds like your voice. It must be you. Well, if you know it's me, why are you asking such a stupid question? Well, I want to make sure because I'm a polite lady, that's why. Uh, well, there's no need to do that. Uh, when I say you're on the Tom Likas show, who's likely to be saying that? Probably you, but I wasn't for sure because I talked to a couple people before you, so I was just very. They didn't say you're on the Tom Likas show. Only one person can say that. Oh, okay. Well, awesome. I made it through, and it didn't take me very long at all, so I'm very impressed. But the first thing I want to say to you is I, I totally apologize to you because I don't know what your show's about today. I just kind of caught the tail end of you speaking, mm-hmm. and that's the only reason I'm calling in. I've always caught oh. the tail end of you speaking, mm-hmm. and that's why that's what motivated my call today. Uh-huh. And I totally, totally commend you for making a living at degrading women because you know what? All of us have to make a living at doing something. Mm. And no matter what it is, whether it's degrading men, women, or whatever. There, I don't have to degrade anybody. Women do a pretty good job of it on their own. Oh, no, no, no. We oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And trust me, I am probably one of the most attractive older women in Scottsdale, Arizona, but I'm not even from Well, of course, you had to put that proviso of older. Older, I'd say 38, maybe past for 28, but that doesn't... Well, that's like like being one of the more attractive 1987 Mercedes around. Sure, it's still a Mercedes, but it's an 87. But this is what I want to say. I am 38 years old. I'm more educated than probably 95% of the people that I run into. I've mm. never met a man in my life. And you're humble, too. Me. Never met a man in my life who could take care of me the way I can take care of myself. Well, so, uh, obviously you're not as attractive as you say you are. Do you really think that women seek out men because of their pocketbook? Yes. What happened to me, honey? I'm sorry. I don't care about you, dear. There are exceptions to every rule. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. So what? <laughs> That's your 
favorite line. Every time I've been on this... Because it's true. Every time I hear you say there's an exception to every rule. But I there is. You, this world wouldn't even be turning if it weren't for women. So I don't know why you... you who, say, who said Who said we don't want women on this earth? I want women. Women are the best sperm depositories, I best human toilets. Bad, ugly, tall, big... There's somebody who can go get my dinner and iron my clothes. I think it's spectacular. And I, I would not want to live in a world without people like that. Go around. And let me tell you, there's some very short, fat, ugly women in the world that I choose will probably triple yours. That, uh, no, that, that's fantastic. So what? They're short, fat, and ugly. And therefore, they'll never have a man. Bottom line. No matter what their IQs are, dear. The Tom Likas Show.